All right, so pneumonia. What is pneumonia? Pneumonia is the excess of fluid in the lungs from the, an inflammatory process. And this disease process seriously reduces gas exchange. So what exactly does that mean? Now, when we're talking about pneumonia, we're talking about all the way down in the, in the lungs where the alveolar are um, and where gas exchange takes place. So we're, just, we're, we're not up in the bronchioles. We're all the way down into the um, alveoli and the alveolar space. So when organisms penetrate through that mucosa and start to multiply in the alveolar space, white blood cells migrate to the area to um, help to ward off the infection. This migration of the white blood cells causes capillary leakage, edema, edema and exudate that collects in and around the alveoli and the alveolar walls thicken thus impairing gas exchange and leading to hypoxemia. Okay, so let's review what we have so far. So far we have the microorganism penetrating through the mucosa, multiplying in the alveolar space. You have the white blood cells migrating to the area. And that causes capillary leakage and edema and exudate. And, that, and this capillary leakage collects in and around the alveoli and the alveolar walls thicken. And this causes impaired gas exchange that can lead to hypoxemia. Okay, now we're going to look at that capillary leakage and the fibrinogen that has gone into the cells. Now, what this does is it stiffens the lungs, reducing compliance and decreasing vital capacity. Now, now, the capillary leakage spreads the infection to other areas of the lung. If the organisms move into the bloodstream, then you can have sepsis. And if the organisms move into the pleural cavity, then you have empyema. Pneumonia's etiology. Infectious pneumonia can be caused from bacteria, fungi, viruses, or types of cancer. Non-infectious pneumonia comes from things that we inhale, such as smoke, toxic gas, and chemical fumes. Non-infectious pneumonia can also be from aspiration of water, food, saliva, and vomit. Pneumonia incidence and prevalence. Pneumonia can be either community acquired or healthcare acquired. Look at table 31-2. Community acquired basically means that it's con contracted outside of the healthcare setting. Healthcare acquired is explained quite nicely in table 31-2. Healthcare associated means that the onset and diagnosis of pneumonia occurs less than 48 hours after admission to inpatient with specific risk factors, such as living in, the, living in a nursing home or assisted living, receiving IV therapy or wound care, um, or seen in, at a hospital or dialysis clinic within the last 30 days. Now, hospital acquired, the onset of pneumonia is less than 48 hours after admission to the hospital without the risk factors. Ventilator assisted pneumonia is the onset of pneumonia is within 48 to 72 hours after endotracheal intubation. So basically all I want you to know out of table 31-2 is that there are community acquired um, pneumonias which means that they occurred outside of the healthcare setting, that you have healthcare associated pneumonias which means that they you have pneumonia within 40, 48 hours of admission to the hospital with certain risk factors, and that there is hospital acquired, which is the diagnosis um, of pneumonia less than 48 hours after admission to the hospital um, without the risk factors. Does that make sense? Okay. So that takes care of the difference between community acquired and healthcare acquired. 
All pneumonias are more common in late fall to winter. Community acquired is more common than healthcare acquired. You can see the risk factors for each in Table 31.1. Two to five million people a year in the U.S. get pneumonia, and more than 50,000 die. The high-risk groups include the elderly, nursing home residents, hospitalized patients, people with neurological problems due to difficulty swallowing, and mechanical ventilation. These groups should get the pneumonia vaccine because they are at high risk. These same high risk group should be given the seasonal flu vaccine as well. Now let's look at the health assessment. When you're gathering the history on your patient, you look at their risk factors, which go which they've gone over quite nicely in table 31.1, both for community acquired and healthcare acquired pneumonia. Um, you're looking for the elderly patient. You're looking for patients who have not received their pneumonia vaccine, um, perhaps did not get their um, influenza vaccine the previous season. They sometimes they will have chronic health problems, um, poor nutritional status, especially with the healthcare acquired pneumonia. But just look at those risk factors um, for pneumonia in Table 31.1. Your physical assessment, these patients a lot of times will have fever and chills. They're very tired. They have um, shortness of breath or tr and trouble gasping for getting their breath. Excuse me. Um, they'll have hypoxia. They'll have a productive cough. They may experience chest pain, but they'll tell talk about the chest pain um, that it's when they take a good deep breath in or um, when they're coughing, their chest is hurting. Um, they will a lot of times have diminished um, breath sounds with crackles or wheezes. Sometimes they'll be hypotensive, which is a warning sign because that's an early sign of sepsis. Diagnos diagnostic testing for pneumonia. Chest x-ray, um, sputum cultures, usually with gram stain, sputum culture and sensitivity, a CBC and a white blood cell count. Um, pulse oximetry, ABGs, and if the, if the chest x-ray shows pleural effusions, sometimes they'll do a thoracentesis, but that's fairly rare. For patients with pneumonia, you always want to make sure you're checking a oxygen saturation when you check your vital signs. The elderly present differently with pneumonia. A lot of times, older patients with pneumonia have weakness and fatigue, um, and they'll be lethargic, and they'll have a poor appetite. But a lot of times, fever and cough are absent. The most common symptom of pneumonia in the elderly patient is a change in cognition or acute, con acute confusion from the hypoxia. So we have to be able to look at our elderly patients a little differently. Remember, the elderly patients with, can present with confusion due to hypoxia. Um, it will behoove you to look at the green box on page 603. Now moving on to the nursing interventions to care for the patient with pneumonia. One of the first things that we need to do is improve their gas exchange. And one of the ways we do that is with oxygen therapy. It's usually delivered by nasal cannula or mask, but now sometimes, especially in the elderly, if they're confused, they won't leave the mask on. So we have to make sure that we are checking on them frequently to make sure they're getting their oxygen therapy. We also need to make sure that we are looking at the skin integrity on the face and behind the ears for redness and skin breakdown. Next, the next way we can do to improve gas exchange is bronchial hygiene. Incentospirometry is used to improve the inspiratory muscle action and to prevent or reverse atelectasis. And we've, we've all been instructed on how to do incentospirometry. Um, I will usually try to encourage the patients to um, do it during commercial breaks when watching TV. Um, that usually gets there um, five to ten times per hour.
We also want to make sure that we are turning our patients every two hours and encouraging them to cough and deep breathe to clean out those um, bronchioles as well. Preventing airway obstruction, again, it goes back to that cough and deep breathe every two hours to aid with clearing of secretions. Encourage fluid intake to aid in thinning the secretions. Um, a lot of times they are given bronchodilators and expectorants. Sometimes they are given IV steroids. And with that, you need to make sure that you're watching blood sugars, um, especially in your diabetic patients or in your elderly patients. Um, you want to make sure that you are, um, when anytime IV steroids are being given, that we are monitoring blood sugars. We want to prevent sepsis. And sepsis from pneumonia, the risk for death is high. So one of the things we want to do is make sure that we're educating our patients on their antibiotics. So a lot of times patients will start on antibiotic therapy in the hospital for pneumonia, but will end their um, regimen with PO antibiotics at home. So again, it's very important to make sure that people continue taking their antibiotics once they go home. So as we review pneumonia, big things to remember with pneumonia is that um, some are hospital acquired, or excuse me, healthcare acquired. Some are community. Community is more common than healthcare acquired pneumonia. Um, that as for nursing interventions, we want to look at improving gas exchange and preventing airway obstructions and preventing sepsis. And that we do that by encouraging the patient to turn, cough, and deep breathe every two hours. They're taking their antibiotics and bronchodilators. If they are placed on IV steroids, that we are watching their blood sugars. And that is pneumonia in the nutshell.